another Spider-Man book. <laughs> yeah, another Spider-Man book. But this one's actually really good. Uh, people show up for the Spider-Man reviews. I'm happy because I'm going to keep making them because I buy the book and I love the character. It's just Marvel competing with itself is a huge problem and it really dilutes the really good books. And it's just obvious that they're using it as a crutch to crutch up sales. But at the same time, it's only a Band-Aid because you know what happens? They put out so much and people just get tired of it. And the actual sales for like the bigger books drop. A lot of books that are really good don't get attention. You know, there's better ways to do it. Maybe uh, you want to do Symbiote Spider-Man and you want to do Life Story. Why don't you do one of those after the other one <laughs> has finished instead of putting three to four out a month? There's better ways to do it. <laughs> You're competing with yourself, like I've said it over and over again, and you bring down and you dilute and you might get those short-term numbers, but eventually things are going to crash and they're already moving that way. Like there's going to be a, and the industry is already kind of crashing, but there's going to be a big crash and Marvel is going to be to blame. Marvel is going to be to blame for it. They have nobody to blame but themselves and it's, it sucks. It's going to, it's going to suck to see, you know, the medium completely fizzle out. Imagine a world with no comic book stores. That's a sad, it's a sad, that's a sad thought if you think about it. But, you know, we'll just keep doing it as long as we can. But anyway, uh, this is the last Spider Man book for the week. <laughs> I only got two as much as uh, they wanted to push out. There's so many Spider Man books every week. But I only picked up Life Story because I love that book and this one. And the rest, I got a lot of pull. I got X-Men books, Daredevil, Power Rangers, some other stuff to do this week. So we're going to have some variety of books we talk about. Uh, as far as this book, this is the last one. There's, or this isn't the last one. There's only one more. This has been a, a pretty good event. Uh, it's been a great Craven story. I've liked it. Now, it's no, you know, ah, shoot. It's, it's the name of the old school run where he uh, buries spider-man it's 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 out of my mind and i have it in trade and it's escaping my mind but we all know what you talk we all know what i'm talking about where he buried spider-man uh craven's last hunt am i am i getting that wrong oh man i'm gonna get roasted if i got that wrong but that was a iconic story so great and uh you know some people can do Craven well. Some people can't. I think Nick Spencer's done pretty good. This has been a pretty good run. And I think, you know, a lot of us were weary. Is Nick Spencer going to do a good job? Is he going to be able to do Spider-Man? And I think for the most part he has, yeah. I think he's done pretty good. And I'm glad to see that because I'm glad <laughs> we are, we don't have Dan Slott anymore. And I remember when they announced Nick Spencer Everyone's freaking out. And I think a lot of that has changed. I think this has been a good redemption arc for him, considering his terrible, terrible, garbage, <laughs> trash heap, Captain America run, Hail Hydra, all that garbage. Um, for the most part, this is going to, the next issue is going to be a big showdown. It's going to conclude Spencer's first big event. And for the most part, he's done pretty good. One thing that I've really liked is that they actually have a good artist <laughs> for a Spider-Man book on here. Chris Blanco, or whatever his name is. Blanco. Man, that dude is not... He should not be on Spider-Man books. And I feel like he's going to be in the rotation. So when I first saw this, this is not Roberto Ramos. This is somebody else that's doing this art. And what's nice about it is this artist fits with all of the other artists doing this book, except Chris. Chris is the only one that stands out. So this is not Ramos. Ramos did the cover. But I went this whole issue thinking Ramos did the art. And then I went back and looked like, oh, that's not him. That's not him. It's somebody else. So it's nice, you know, when it's consistent, everything looks good. And then, you know... We get somebody like Chris Blanco, which I got to point out, even the shill sites say his art doesn't fit. You know what's bad? When the when the shill sites that lick butt 
all day actually criticize something, you know that there is a big problem. But as far as this issue goes, there's a lot of dialogue between Peter and Kurt Connors because Connors' son, who it actually gets confirmed in this book that the true soul of the person. So if you remember in the clone conspiracy, they brought a lot of people back, uh, particularly like Ben Riley came back to life, a few other characters that have died over time. It was confirmed in this issue that Kurt Connors' son has his son that, you know, when he became the shed, he killed his family. And when he, uh, when they got brought back to life, it was confirmed that, you know, the original soul is in the new body by Dr. Strange. That's an actual page in here as a flashback. So that's nice to know. I think that kind of smashes up, you know, a lot of people like it's not really them, but it really is. It, it is them. It was, it was used as a way to bring people back to life. And it's nice that uh, we got a confirmation on that. And uh, what happens is, so you see this trickle of blood coming down here. That's because Lizard's had an inhibitor chip in him to make it so he can control the lizard and also makes it so he can't hurt people. Um, Peter takes that out of him because it's the only way for him to go save his son. It's all part of Craven's grand design that he explains in this book. You'll have to read it if you want to get all of those details, you know. But the short story here is basically Lizard is going to go save his son and fight Clone Craven. And I think in the next issue, um, Daddy Craven is going to come out and fight Spider Man. I think that this, uh, my prediction is that Daddy Craven is going to die. Clone Craven is going to step up and become the new Craven, who's a little younger, a little hungrier, a little better. And that will be the new Craven. So we'll see what happens. Overall, I've really enjoyed this run. I thought it's been fun. We'll see how it ends. My biggest question is, can Nick Spencer actually tie things up better than Dan Slott? Because if there was one thing Dan Slott was terrible at, it was ending a run. Like He could start stuff off real good. And then at the end of the story arc, it just falls apart. So how will he do? That's my big question. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for subscribing. If you're new, subscribe. Uh, check that notification bell. Throw a like up. It really helps the video. Share the video. Uh, check out the links in the description. And that's really it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I do this channel pretty much for fun, and it just kind of help get more comics. So I appreciate all of you that come over here and watch. Uh, and you know hopefully we'll just keep this going thinking about adding some other types of reviews on here maybe some games talk about like talk about game content stuff like that i don't know i gonna do more with it i've enjoyed making this non npc content and uh i'm probably going to keep it that way over here unless the other channel gets shut down we'll see what happens but anyway thanks for watching guys love y'all see ya